Let's go ahead and get started. Hello all and welcome to this FSOF webinar. My name is Steve Bowles and I run uh, business development for FSOF. Today I'll talk about how organizations can leverage modern smart capture to capture and enable just about any device, application or process through the use of modern standardized APIs. This expansion of capture and its pervasive nature can lead to an extensive efficiency through what I call incremental automation. So let's go ahead and get started. Documents have always been an essential part of business, both in paper and digital form, and present unique challenges for all types of organizations. So whether it's a law firm that just received a thousand boxes of paper documents from opposing counsel, an accounting department that processes invoice email attachments, or a legal department processing visa applications, the impact on productivity can be massive if they're just manually processed. Adding to that pain is what we call the multi-channel problem, or receiving documents from a wide variety of sources, paper, email, fax, scanners, etc. So as technology companies began addressing the document problem, solutions began arriving on the market in the late 1980s, early 1990s, with the advent of big enterprise content management systems like FileNet and Documentum. Capture quickly arrived on the scene to help process documents and make them accessible digitally. While Capture started with a paper focus, it transformed over time to take on all documents, physical and digital. Over the next few slides, I'll talk about the types of capture that developed over the years. In the early days, companies built centralized processing centers to digitize large volumes of paper documents. Documents were shipped and mailed to the centralized capture location and expensive big iron scanning hardware was utilized. As the documents were scanned, some basic metadata was added, mostly for search purposes. In most cases, this was all performed to create a digital file room for speed of access and records management. These images were stored on optical media and accessible to a few select centralized users. As the price of capture hardware and software was reduced and networking technology improved, organizations could decentralize their capture efforts and move operations out to field locations. This eliminated mail and shipping costs and reduced the time for digital access. Still very paper focused, the emphasis started to narrow in on automated extraction and indexing, and the metadata was not only used for search, but was also entered into systems of record to reduce manual data entry. With the rise of the scanning copier, the need arose for solutions that could leverage a single device that served many constituents. Organizations still leverage centralized and decentralized capture, but now the technology was pushed further out to the individual end user. Automation and workflow were key, and the standardized repeatable processes that capture could provide became necessary on a grand scale. Around this time, as more and more documents arrived digitally, email, fax, and other multi-channel capture features were added, and efficiencies spread throughout the enterprise. If you look at capture over these years, advancements were tied to core advances in several technology areas. Infrastructure and networking gave the ability to move documents fast and efficient, efficiently between locations. Applications like document management and content management systems provided an end resting place. Scanning hardware got faster, smaller, and cheaper. And storage systems moved from optical to storage area networks to cloud-based. Here's the approximate timeline of capture and the technology associated with the different eras. So if you look at centralized capture, it was the the days of local area networks, document and image management, big iron scanning and optical storage. It was, we moved into the 2000s and capture was decentralized. Wide area networks were an enabler. Uh, we had enterprise content management systems, hardware got cheaper and could move outside of the centralized locations and storage area networks were on the rise. 
As we got into the mid to late 2000s, distributed capture arrived on the scene, high-speed networking, panel applications like eCopy and, uh, and others, scanning copiers and desktop scanning and cheap storage were on the rise. So along this journey, uh, so and, and finally you see we arrived today at the era of what I call pervasive smart capture. So along this journey, capture began to spread in an outward ring, becoming available to more and more users and more and more applications. So just what does pervasive mean with regards to capture and what technology is really driving it? First, let's start with a common definition and foundation of what pervasive means when it comes to technology. So it can be defined as a technology that spreads and is available widely throughout the enterprise to everyone and everything. As with each area of capture defined in the timeline, there are core technologies that have made pervasive capture a reality, and they are the cloud, so providing smart capture services anywhere, anytime, on-prem or in the field, content services, the advent of cloud content service providers like Box and SharePoint Online make content available once captured. Web services, with open API standard, standards, APIs are now easily accessible from any application through standardized formatting. And finally, applications like robotic process automation and intelligent process automation have revolutionized process business, but have a need for document intelligence. So the evolution of our technology has led to a diverse enterprise landscape, which includes human and digital users, physical devices, plus digital applications. These exist both on-premise and in the cloud, creating a complex hybrid operating environment that requires flexible and modular capture services. If you overlay today's applications onto this landscape, you see a diverse enterprise ecosystem that contains a wide variety of applications that are hungry for document intelligence down at the transaction level. The only way to service them is with simple, easy to consume services. It's that transactional and process centric focus in the modern organization that has driven a move from large batch based document ingestion to transactional processing. This is also tied to the push outward of captured technology into the hands of end users and processes that are focused on day-to-day -day transactional interactions with individual documents. So tying all that back to our historical transition to today, here we arrive at an environment that provides an application interface for both desktop and mobile users to process and interact with documents and supports all the types of capture we previously mentioned in this presentation. But in the background, there's also open API Swagger enabled web services that can support software robots, devices, workflow, and all other applications that require document intelligence. This hidden layer, really transparent to end users, is a critical component for pervasive capture. Of particular note is the trend towards citizen developer friendly apps that provide an opportunity for incremental automation. One note here, the legacy capture platforms that grew up from the early timeline weren't built to accommodate pervasive capture. Their technology foundation was built in the days of centralized capture, a client server architecture without native browser support or modern web services. So there's probably a few of you saying, uh, hey, APIs and web services, those are for developers. If I can't code, I can't use them. Today, that's just not true. There's a relatively new standard in web services called the Open API specification, previously known as Swagger. It provides a standard on how REST APIs are described and documented. This format is easy to learn and readable to both humans and machines. The API definition can be imported into applications, which can easily understand, render, and integrate with apps that publish open API endpoints. So how does this matter? 
Many software companies saw this as an opportunity to allow users to transform code and use these APIs through a visual interface. With many of the applications seen here, you can import an open API compatible definition and immediately have the API as a visual tool set that any user with a bit of technical background can leverage, AKA citizen developers. Now capture can be added to any application through simple configuration versus custom code. In this example, a document's information can be captured and used to automatically make the workflow process more intelligent. This takes away the requirement for manual intervention and human data entry steps. The result is something called incremental automation. So with capture available to everything, document automation is possible even in small instances. So frontline users can now begin to eliminate all manual document interactions and every process can be a target. RPA and IPA can now have an added layer of intelligence that makes them document aware and that much more efficient. Documents are so widespread throughout business today, any human touch point can be an opportunity for incremental automation. Processes where info is entered manually or where humans have to interact to choose how to route documents can be great candidates. Also, points where documents need to be validated and processed if incorrect, incorrect, perhaps where signatures or data must be checked, all of these are great places to start in the incremental automation journey. So incremental automation can provide immense value and leads to broad reaching automation and efficiency, reducing the time to process and required personnel, ensuring accurate extraction and valid clean data, and all the while getting smarter and smarter through operator interaction and learning. So before we dive into an example of incremental automation, I wanna set the stage. So for the demo, I'll show you how you can combine FSOS web services with an intelligent process application, Nintex in this case, to automate the upload of forms and their associated data. This demo will simulate part of the clinical trial process where participating entities like hospitals upload standardized forms that will need to be validated and archived for record keeping and audit purposes. We'll show off Swagger enabled APIs and their capabilities. So let's go ahead and get started. So but before we dive into the demo, I'll give you a quick preview. So in the, the whole clinical trial world, there's a ton of different documents that are used. Uh, a lot of them are standardized FDA forms. And these forms sometimes have a bunch of different versions. There's a big handful of these that need to be um, processed and archived during the whole uh, clinical trial process. So you can see there's a ton of information on here, things like the clinical investigator, the address. We've got information about the, the name of the research facility and then other data that can, uh, can help make our processes uh, more, um, more efficient if we can auto extract that information in that data. So but before we dive into that demo portion, um, really quickly, I'll give you a look at what, uh, what these APIs, these modern APIs look like um, behind the scenes. So in FSOF's new APIs, everything is documented with what we call the Open API Swagger standard. So this is a, a really standardized way of documenting and uh, making the information about these APIs available. And this is hitting uh, one of our servers that's actually running uh, 4502. And you can see that all of these different APIs are now fully documented. Not only are they documented for these developers, but you can actually test and play around with and understand them through this interface. So this Swagger interface lets you come in here and let's say I wanna go ahead and uh, in this case, I'll use one of the APIs that checks on all the different batches that are running in the system. You can see that I get a nice pretty response with all the different information about those particular batches. Uh, likewise, I'll go ahead and navigate down here and, and show you off the one that we'll use in the demo today. 
this particular web service when I call it and I pass it a document. And we'll go ahead and do that while I'm talking here, just so I can show you kind of the raw data and what's going on in the background. I'll go ahead and pass it that uh, FDA form 1572, and we'll go ahead and try it out. So it goes ahead and, and processes, kicks back the response and all the different information that we need about that particular document. Okay, any questions on that so far? All right, so let me give you an overview of the demo and how it would work. So there's two components to this particular workflow. Uh, the first one, we'll go ahead and navigate, and I've got a form. And this form simulates a, a hospital or some type of research facility that's working with a biotech company that has uh, some FDA forms that they need to upload about their clinical trial. So we'll go ahead and put an email in there. We'll select that particular form and we'll go ahead and submit it. So what this does, it uploads that form into the system and kicks off a workflow. Uh, in that workflow, we've got FSOP web services enabled. And I'll go ahead and walk you through while that document's actually being uploaded. So in the front end of that workflow, we've got the form which initiates that particular process. And typically what would happen, and, and this is obviously an opportunity for incremental automation, the form would get uploaded. Somebody would have to hand key information about the facility, either on the front end or the back end. In this case, as the process commences, it goes through, it loops through all the documents that are uploaded in that particular interface. It gets passed to FSOF Web Services, we actually analyze that and get the doc type or the particular form that we're working with. And then we can branch on that information. So normally an end user would have to interact with this workflow and manually route that document to a particular person or particular workflow. In this example, that's taken away. And automatically we can route it to a particular uh, form workflow. In this case, it's the FDA 1572 form, okay? So let's go back here and I'll show you what happens once it goes into that particular process. We'll go ahead and open what I call the backend processor. So in this example, any form 1572 gets passed into this workflow. All the response information from the FSOFT Intelligent API gets extracted. So we get the, uh, um, the clinical investigator name, the address, all the information from that form gets auto extracted, the facility name, and then we assign a task to that particular user. So in this example, I'll show you how the task was configured. Um, we actually use the information passed from FSOFT to make the email and the task more intelligent. So now the end user will get an automated email uh, once that email is approved, we actually archive that particular information into Box. Okay, so now this is the first step in the process. So we've given somebody the opportunity to upload that form. FSOP processed it, passed back all that document intelligence back to the workflow. The first step, all that intelligence was used to create this intuitive email. So this email was sent, we passed the doc type that was extracted, we passed the research facility, we passed the clinical investigator, and now it's queued up for review. So I'll click on that and I'll take you to a form. So this form was auto-populated with all that extracted metadata from that document. Now you can imagine a biotech company that might receive a thousand of these forms a day, if they had to manually key that information, that's a huge opportunity for incremental automation. So pulling that information from the form, populating the fields, letting the user QA it really quick, add some additional information, approve that data and submit it is a huge and massive time saver, okay? So the end result, after we've ingested, QA'd all that information, 
in this example, I've got it archiving the box automatically where we, we create a storage uh, area that includes the facility, the clinical investigator, and then all the forms that are tied to that particular trial. Okay, and we also automatically name the file with that information, which somebody would have to do manually. And then we put a, uh, a comment or a note that initiates that auto trail, uh, audit trail, all done automatically just by uploading and calling those document intelligence APIs. Okay. Um, 